Coming up on Zola Lever Presents, we meet YouTube sensation and recording artist Joshua Aaron. Stay with us. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Levin presents. Welcome to Zola Levitt Presents. I'm David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. Jeffrey Seif. Today on Zola Levitt Presents, you get to meet Joshua Aaron. He is a messianic musician and artist, and he is our friend. Not only a friend, we are huge fans, I would say, of this guy. He's become a dear friend. We really call him a family member, and we're so glad that he's a part of our team. Hi, I'm Mail Spin, also a musician. We love him and Dove Schwartz today. You know these guys, don't you? Yes, and a word there, younger ah. generation. When I started off in this, uh, I was new and wet behind the ears, and a guy took me under his wing named Zola Levitt. And uh, this ministry is all about helping the young to get a launch, and we want to do that. With a name like Joshua and Aaron, who can lose? There's got to be anointing all over that guy's destiny. Let's go to Joshua, Aaron, right now. How long have you been living in Israel? You made Aliyah. Yeah, made Aliyah a few times, actually. Really? <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I live in the sea of, on the Sea of Galilee right. next to my, my man Chaim, Mailspin. Yeah. Um, and we've got just a great thing going on, the Galilee families, the Galilee guys. We get together and we worship together, we pray together, we have fun together, um, just encourage and challenge each other. But I grew up in Pennsylvania. It was interesting growing up because I grew up in a Catholic town and had an Orthodox Jewish grandmother on one side and a Catholic grandmother on the other side. My father was raised, born and raised in Pennsylvania, uh, Polish Catholic family. They went to the Catholic charismatic meetings in the basement of the Catholic uh -huh. church. Um, and, but my mom got saved, my mom and dad got saved at a full gospel businessmen's meeting in 1977, a year before I was born. Um, you could do the math. But, uh, yeah, I'm almost 40. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you. I'm too <laughs> well, tired. Okay, yeah, I didn't, think, I didn't think you could do the math, yeah. so <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so my mom was invited to come to this full gospel businessmen's meeting where Rabbi Martin Chernoff was, was, was traveling and, and sharing the, the, the message of the Tanakh from a Jewish perspective to Christian men. And the, these Christian men were saying, hey, to my dad, hey, Andy, Hey, we've got a rabbi coming to town. Invite you, bring your Jewish wife. So my mom didn't want to hear anything about the gospel. She loved my dad. Um, he was Catholic, but she didn't care. She, you know, she was raised religious, but she was at that point where she believed in God still, but she didn't really want much to do with re religious Judaism because she saw a lot of coldness. When she moved from Israel to America, she moved to the other holy land for the Jewish people, New York City. Uh -huh. uh, and, um, yeah. But there it was just, it felt, she, it felt cold and, and kind of lifeless. Like they're praying to God, but it felt empty to her. She said, I used to always talk to God, but she said, I didn't always see it in, in my religious circle. But she married my dad. She didn't care that he was Christian. She just loved him. But this rabbi comes to town. After all these Christian men saying, hey, my mother's name's Chana, so they call her Chana because they couldn't pronounce her name. You know, mm. Chana, take your pick. Either you're a Jew or you're a Christian. And she said, she was like, you know, it's confusing because... You know, did the Ita Italians stop becoming Italian when they accepted the Lord? Because in her mind, she's Jewish by birth, by blood. But this rabbi came to town, Rabbi Martin Chernoff, and he shared the gospel from a way she'd never heard before. He shared about the, this great rabbi, not named Jesus, named Yeshua, uh, that he had 12 Talmidim, uh, not disciples, Talmidim, and they That's did right. a thing called mikv mikveh, mikveh, and they celebrated Pesach. He, didn't, he used all these Jewish terms, that, which is what they would have used. Right. Uh, 2,000 years ago, and, and, and mom, up until that point, she, she really, she, she, she was open to the idea, but she knew that Christianity was for the Gentiles. Judaism was the only thing for the Jews. Um, maybe Elvis along the way might have helped. She loved his gospel songs. Uh -huh. She loved How Great Thou Art and uh, some of his gospel stuff, which is amazing. But that night, he shared, he shared the good news to my mom in a Jewish way, like she had never heard before. And she said, she said, that night I didn't convert to Christianity. She said, I completed my Judaism Amen. Uh, when I accepted the greatest rabbi that ever lived as my Jewish, Jewish Messiah. 
so I grew up with that, that connection, that understanding. Um, we kind of had a balance. We still went to church, um, but we drive two hours every few months to, to Beth Yeshua, a Messianic synagogue in Philly, over two hours. And then my grandmother would make us, do, you know, every time I went to her house on Shabbat, she'd put the kippah on my head, you're Jewish, your mother's Jewish. She'd always remind me uh, so that the, uh, the Christians didn't get me all the way. <laughs> she always was trying to make sure. And I'm so glad she did. I'm so glad she did because as I became a father uh, 13 years ago, I'm a 13-year-old, I can't believe it, um, I started thinking, how am I going to raise my kids? You know, I wanna, and I realized I want to raise my kids in the oldest form of Judaism, that's Messianic Judaism, because we go back 2,000 years. Right. Every modern form of Judaism today goes back, it goes back, but it doesn't go back 2,000 years. And um, it's been just a beautiful journey. Still kind of learning as we go, but it's been a beautiful journey. Oh, 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 oh. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, Ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com, you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. We'll keep on singing till he comes again. Then we'll sing some more We'll keep on singing till he comes again Then we'll sing forevermore love your music and I know that there's so much more coming from you. Tell us how you got started in, in I know you, you call yourself a YouTube artist <laughs> yeah. and uh, I, I think you're more than that but just tell us how you got started quickly. I know you're so busy. How you got started, where you think you're going with your music and who you want to reach. Well I really feel like I think we're all called to be a bridge to, to, in some way. So I feel like I'm called to be a bridge between Judaism, Messianic Judaism and the church, um, bringing everybody together because I believe that's who Messiah is coming back for, one bride. So music is the tool and you know when I write, I, I kind of write with that in mind to be, bring people together. How Great Is Our God for instance. I didn't write that song. Uh, a friend of mine, Ed Cash and Chris Tomlin wrote that song and I think another guy with them. Um, I heard the world version came out and they sang it in several languages. Loved it. And I loved it too. Yeah. But when they finished, they got to the last language, I'm like, Ugh. I'm waiting for Hebrew. Because, it, I mean, not, they didn't have to sing in Hebrew, but in my mind, we're in a prophetic day and age where Israel didn't, shouldn't exist. I mean, it's miraculous. My great grandparents were killed in the Holocaust. My grandmother came here. Uh, my mom was born here. And, and th this never happened in the history of the world where a nation was, was, was coming back to life, just like as the prophets would say, after, especially after 2,000 years, in a language. And um, when they sang that song, I just felt like it was the right time to meld this. And I thought, I need to do this song in Hebrew. So I just I sang it in Hebrew, I did a music video, and that's when it, 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 people just started finding the song on YouTube. It was such a blessing to me and hopefully a blessing to many. To everyone, yes. Um, that kind of became, like I said, like a bridge to reach the church. And they all knew it. You know, it reminds me of the Psalms. You know, King David would write a song and he'd be like, to the tune of Dances with Lilies, for instance. Everybody knew what Dances with Lilies was, but he was singing a new lyric, so they could just jump right in. They might not have known the words, but they knew half of the portion of the song. They knew the music. And that's kind of what How Great Is Our God did, did, did for, I think, a lot of Christians. Like, I already know the song. I'll sing it in Hebrew. I, in my mind, I know the words. And it became a cool gateway 
for people to understand. Um, you know, I think there's power in the language of Hebrew, a language that was dead for 2,000 years, but now is, is back right. again. It's hard to fathom that there are churches in America that defend replacement theology. You know, the Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation to those who believe. For some reason, we always stop at that verse. <laughs> the verse isn't over yet to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Right. Like, it's like this message always, it always had that pattern. And um, I have here Romans 11, 11, I say then, had they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, Roman, Romans 11, 11. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now verse 12, now if the fall uh, of them be the riches of the world and diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more will their fullness be? I really believe this speaks of the time when us as a whole, our people are going to accept the Lord and we need to look at it that way. If, if you look at the scripture as if there, there is no Jew and, and, and the Gentiles are replaced and you can almost just delete the book of Revelations because Jewishness is back again. There's a temple again, there's right. references to the feasts. I mean, it's all Jewish from front to back, you know. Uh, and I, all I can say is there's just been some teaching throughout history. My, my, my grandmother, you know, knew about this. this she, was, she, was, she was raised Orthodox, she was Orthodox. She knew about all this. She didn't know anything good about Christianity, but she was taught everything bad, historically. So we need to, we need to, to uh, as, as believers, or as Christians that might be watching, we need to look at the Word of God and take it at face value, not a filter through something that m perhaps might have fit politically 1,600 years ago, uh, but who fits in, in the kingdom today through the Word of God. That's it right there. That's it right there. Yeah. In America, we want to pray for Israel. We want to pray for you and Chaim and, and those who are here. How can we specifically pray for you? Specifically? Specifically. Man, that God would keep our, the body of Messiah intact and that would be, would be the head and not the tail. I believe that this is the season. Uh, you know, the pioneers of the Messianic movement in Israel, it was hard. It was hard. They, they plowed on hard soil, hard asphalt, you know. But I feel, I really believe now that all these young, this young generation is born and raised coming out of, out of, out of this land, uh, being raised in this land, that they would become the head and the, the tail. They, they would be the, the business owners, that they would be uh, the great tent makers like Paul was, but also at the same time bold in their faith. Um, that God would raise up the local body um, to, to lead with, with, with boldness not just spiritually, but, fi but financially, but by the example of their families. And I believe that is happening, but that, you, that, that America would continue to pray. You know, the Bible, I think in James, the book of Yaakov, that's what, that was his name. Uh, it says to do good to those in need, especially to the household of faith. So remember the household of faith here in Israel. My salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light, my salvation, who shall I be afraid? I love music, uh, worship music, messianic worship music. I just wouldn't want to be a messianic musician or any musician for that matter. And I say this in all sincerity, because it's such a precarious living. I know these folk, they're on the road and they go week to week and rely on donations, and that's a hard living. I don't know why I put it down. That's so much like my very own in a ministry like this. We rely on people who fall in love with what we're all about, just like a musician does. If you enjoy the kind of praise that comes forth in the worship messianic and in the teaching messianic, please help put us on the map, just like we're trying to help put young talent on the map. Right. You know what I say about that? We all have our gifts. Some are musicians, some are teachers, just like Doe Shores, who is one of our teachers in the series. We are able to bring him because of your support. We just want to thank you for that. And we thank you. And we hope you watched Dove's series, Watch Therefore and Be Ready. And Dave, you actually had a time that you met with Dove to ask him a few questions. Here's Dave's interview with Dove now. I am sitting here at one of my favorite spots in Israel, 
the Sea of Galilee. It's breathtaking and one of my favorite spots. Today, we were on a boat, on the Jesus boat, worshiping, having a great time. And now we're with my brother, my new brother, our Zola Levitt brother, Dove Shores. We're so glad you're with us today. David, such a blessing to be here with you, and you're in good company. Mashiach Yeshua loved this spot too. So how many times have you come to Israel starting as a child? Well, I've been coming to Israel for about 22 years and started moving this direction about, about eight or nine years ago, but made the final move a couple of years ago. You know, my mother heard from the prophets I'll bring them back from the north, south, east, and west. And uh, she moved here in 1984. So I had a second home here for a while, but there's nothing like a Jew coming back to his homeland, living here in Eretz Yisrael. As a young boy, did you feel a calling that someday you'd be living in Israel? It's interesting you'd bring that up because when I was a little boy, I started hearing about prophecy. Uh, a book called The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey came out and, and the Jesus movement was sweeping America. And during that time, as a little boy, I began hearing about Israel, the significance of Israel that would become even more so in my lifetime. So uh, good question. Zola Levitt Ministries has been around for about 38 years now, and I believe that there's a new generation that is being a part of this wonderful ministry. Can you tell me about that? You know, Zola Levitt Ministries has been such a blessing to me because as, as a Jewish believer in Mashiach Yeshua, I want to understand the balanced, authentic teaching of the Bible, which includes the Jewishness of our faith. But like I said, the great thing about Zola's ministry and, and those who've helped carry it on, it's so balanced, it's so authentic, it's such good Bible teaching. So it's been such a blessing for me. And I'd like to share with you how that relates to Bible prophecy. We live in such an important generation where Bible prophecy is leaping off the pages, right? right. And, and, and so I love the opportunity, the platform that Zola Levitt Ministry provides to teach Bible prophecy in an authentic and balanced way, right? We know, we know the Messiah Yeshua, well, he can come back in the clouds for us in the rapture at any moment. And we also know the time of the tribulation is coming and the return of Messiah to sit on the throne of David and Jerusalem. You know, David, one of the questions I'm asked all the time is, well, couldn't the Lord come back, yes, today in the clouds in the rapture or a thousand years from now? And my answer is absolutely not. And they say, well, well people have been talking about this for thousands of years. And I say, yeah, but uh, 1,500 years ago, there was no Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, the promised land wasn't called by its biblical name, right? There weren't many Jews in the land then, a thousand years ago, 500 years ago. But now the prophetic words of the Bible proclaimed by the apostles is coming to pass right in front of us in our lifetime. For the last five days, we've been on a bus and everywhere we look out the window, things are in bloom. It's beautiful here, I think that that's part of prophecy. Can you explain that? Well, pinch yourself, David, because you are seeing the Bible come to life. And the prophet Yeshiao, Isaiah, he speaks of the time where the wilderness will blossom like the rose, yeah? And we're seeing it all across Israel. You're watching this. You'll, you'll be driving through the desert and see fruit groves and all kinds of things like this. In the Dead Sea, you know, we're gonna go fishing in the Dead Sea one day. That water is going to be fresh and it's going to be watered by this river flowing under the king's throne. Hallelujah. Right. And, and so we are living in that time. We're watching a preview of that time come, come springing out of this promised land right before our very eyes. So the prophets Yeshiao, Yermiyahu, Jeremiah are, are just blossoming in front of us. You know what that makes me want to do? That makes me want to watch for the coming of Messiah Yeshua. It makes me want to hunger and thirst for righteousness. And if we'll do that, Messiah Yeshua promises we will be filled. Filled, what do you mean? Filled with a Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, who will help us and direct us. He's a great helper, David, amen? amen. And, and so he will help us through these prophetic times. I say it this way, 
we have uh, an apostolic, prophetic, end times life to live. The words of the apostles are flying off the pages, fulfilling the words of the prophets. End times meaning Yeshua is coming and we need to be ready. What a blessing to partner with you in Zola Levitt Ministries to do just that. Our resource this week, the series, Watch Therefore and Be Ready on DVD. This eight program series points to prophecy being fulfilled, encouraging us to be ready for the Messiah's return. Each program includes location teaching, reports from Israel, in-studio analysis, plus music from David and Kirsten Hart. Contact us and ask for the DVD series, Watch Therefore and Be Ready. When we're there, when we're there in the land of Zion, next year in Jerusalem, the Shana Haba the Yerushalayim. Next year in Jerusalem, O Lord, will be with you and no more tears. O Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done next year. The Shana Haba the Yerushalayim. Next year in Jerusalem, the Shana Haba the Yerushalayim. Next year in Jerusalem. Hi, thanks for watching Zola Levitt Presents. I just wanted to remind you that we're all over social media too, so you can watch us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But also remember that it does cost money to do that. So please remember us in your donations at the end of the month, the middle of the month, or right now. Please call us at 1-800-WONDERS or visit us at levitt.com. Du bist wie eine Blume. I know you're probably not ready for a German lesson. It means you are like a flower. I'm of German Jewish extract and I remember my mother saying that. You were like a flower. Speaking of which, isn't Israel like a flower that's just blooming today? Everywhere. I think one of your Everywhere. favorite spots was when we saw mustard seed. Right. Or mustard growing. And it's wild there. It's everywhere in the spring. And, and On the Mount of Beatitudes. Yes. And Jesus was teaching right in that area. And I mean, we talk about the tours. I know you're talking about flowers and your mom, and then we turn it to tours, but it does relate. Tours are the Zola Levitt. Yes, in fact, our producer, Ken Berg, his favorite time to be there is in the spring. Of course, he's all about flowers and pictures. He's so attuned to that, but it's just great to see the land come alive. And it's a modern miracle, isn't it? Isn't that part of the prophetic that's going on there right now? Yes, it is. It's prophesied Israel will emerge at the end of the days. In so many ways, it was a withered flower. And if you'll permit, speaking of flowers, uh, in Matthew chapter 6, a lot of us feel like we're withering up in so many ways, shriveling under the heat of trials and tribulations. The Lord says in chapter 6, if you'll permit, and I mention this because I sit here holding the Bible, might as well open it up every now and again. What do you think? Yeshua said, consider the lilies of the field in chapter 6, verse 28. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his glory uh, clothed himself like one of these. And he goes on to say, inasmuch as God uh, can take care of the lilies of the field, that means that he can take care of people like me and you. Isn't it true? Just like Israel seemed to have been pounded into oblivion under hundreds of years of a hot sun, the land had deteriorated. And there can be areas in your life where you can feel the deterioration or not feel it, but think about it in your life and others. And it is so easy to become discouraged. Do you know the word encourage comes from a word meaning to breathe courage in? Sin, circumstances, Satan sucks courage out. When I hear the Lord's words, I am encouraged that he can make your desert to bloom.
And it's because we live by faith, we can be a little more gracious with our resources and our energies. So many people are just out for themselves, but because we know the one who holds our hand and the keys to our future, we can be a little gracious and give up in order to let him work through us because we believe that in as much as he takes care of the flowers, he can take care of us and he can take care of Israel. What do you think? That's true. And, and I love the thought that we brought with you today with Joshua Aaron and the interview with Dove. We are seeing God blooming and new life coming from people that have made Aliyah to Israel. Yes. And he put a new song in their hearts. That's what some people, you know, they're just playing the same old negative narrative. But we're told in Scripture, the Lord can put a new song in our heart and rejuvenate us and revive us. Isn't that fantastic? There was a full plane of Ethiopians making Alia recently that our son had a, had a part in. They're really? coming from everywhere, yes. Yes, the, yeah, Jewish but I know Ethiopian. they're coming. Tell me about your son's involvement, please. He works with International Christian Embassy uh -huh. in Jerusalem. And he was able to film these Ethiopians making Aliyah to Israel. You know who else was involved in it? Everyone who supported the International Christian Embassy. You know, even in our ministry here, you know who's involved in it? Is it just me? Is it just you? Is it just you? Is it just the crew? No, it's all of you. You who believe God and are inspired to share and help get the gospel out from a Jewish perspective and help bring people back to the Lord, back to Israel, to revive this perspective, uh, this Jewish perspective that's been gone so long. And right. you are doing it. You, our viewers, are making all of this happen. Thank you for joining us today to hear stories of people that are being drawn to Israel just like I believe you're being drawn there also. Join us next week. We have much more on Zola Levitt Presents. Jeff? Yes, and as you go, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS, or you can purchase it from our store at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Thanks again for joining us this week. Zola Levitt Ministries and this television program depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.